All right, so I've been toying around with this idea for quite a while about how addiction is actually something that can be used towards in spiritual enlightenment. And so I've been calling that addiction and the mystical path of recovery. You know, my history has a lot to do with addictive behaviors. I was in and out of that world for 20 years, I guess. And it's been several years now since that's been a big part of my life, but I still see the consequences of the way I lived before. And I also see how there's been a lot of good that has come out of that. You know, if you're an addict or an alcoholic and you want to change your life and stop that behavior, it requires a very, very deep change in personality. Not so much just on the mental and physical level, but also on the spiritual level, which is probably everything. So I wanted to share a little bit about what that has been like for me and maybe something other people can use. You know, if you're going to recover from an addiction, it's you have to change all of the characteristics that are negative in your life. So if you're selfish, you have to learn how to be more generous. If you're full of fear all the time, you have to learn how to trust God. If you're manipulative towards other people, then it's important that you learn how to be integrous. If you want to have good self-esteem, you got to consistently do things that create good self-esteem. So I see that as a way towards more of an enlightened state, a more spiritual balance. And if I look back now, I see that I may not have ever had a reason to do the kind of work that's been required if I hadn't had that addictive past. You know, the pain of addiction can be very motivating. And I don't know, most addicts, alcoholics, whatever words you want to use around that, they see the damage that their behavior causes in other people. But because the tendency is to be so self-absorbed and so um, internalized in our reality. Either we can't do anything about it or we won't do anything about it until the pain just gets to a breaking point. You know, in the 12-step program, they call that hitting bottom. Whatever words you're comfortable with, you get to a point where all of a sudden you realize that your own life, your own spiritual salvation is going to have to come from someplace else. And in that moment of surrender, we yield and we ask that force outside of ourselves that has always been with us and sustains us and supports us and keeps our heart breathing to help us. And then there's that magic that happens and that transformation takes place. And until that start, that's the start of it. Until that happens, it's really hard to get any uh, spiritual traction to building a consistent and improved life. So if I look at the, the components of a 12-step program, um, and compare those to a spiritual path or a sadhana that other religions and other organizations use. I see there's such a similarity in it. And I want to go over those just briefly. First of all, there is the admission of a need for help. <clears throat> so hitting that bottom all of a sudden just mandates that you get help. And as you start to do that, you realize that the changes need to take place. There's a surrendering process that happens. And you may surrender to a God as you understand God. You may surrender to nature. You may surrender to people that you care about that you know have your best interest in mind. But there is a surrendering that takes place. The next steps are what's really important for long-term clarity of mind and a better life without substances. And that is a thorough house cleaning. To go back through, and in some religions they call that confession. 12-step groups, they have, there's several steps that relate to an accurate self-appraisal. And then also a way to transfer that confession to another person so that you can get it outside of yourself and have it be evaluated by somebody else that you trust and can give you another insight into it. After that internal cleansing, as best we can, which is a mental process really, we ask God as we understand him and as our spiritual inclination leads to help us change that part of ourself that forced us into addictive behavior. And then as that change occurs and continues, what happens is we find that we need to make restitution to other people. To go back and if we, you know, the old story, if you owe money, pay it back. To do that is to go back and make restitution, whether it's financial or emotional or in order to clear our side of the street and in order to clear the air, that's making amends. And so by doing that, what happens is slowly we build a greater sense of self-esteem. We start to feel more connected to that power that sustains us and enlivens us and allows us to continue to grow and evolve. 
And then as we move forward, and if you look at the 12-step model again, there's prayer and meditation and the service to other people. Almost all spiritual programs uh, encourage people to pray and meditate and be of selfless service to others. So those two are really a direct comparison to you know, traditional Christian values, uh, Buddhist values, Taoist values of being connected and, and, and then using that good benevolence that's generated inside of us for the help for other people. So I look at all of this as a really clear spiritual path. And whether you're doing it through uh, an organized religion, whether you're doing it through your own creative measures, whatever those might be, whether you're doing it through a 12-step program, it is really a perfect way to use addiction for our own spiritual enlightenment. And I guess you ask, what's the benefit? You know, why would I want to do that? And I can only tell you that I'm part of the way up the mountain. And no, I have not arrived any place. I'm just on the path like everybody else. But the peace of mind that comes most of the time from living this way and operating these principles is really, really worthwhile. The ability to feel sincere emotion and share that with other people the ability to not hide from fearful things or fearful thoughts, the ability to continue to grow, the willingness to continue to grow. All of those are outcomes from this you know, mystical path of surrender and growth. So for anybody who's suffering with addictions or, you know, it doesn't have to be substance abuse addictions. It can be just addictions of the mind, that repetitive thoughts that make us crazy uh, the inability to get along with other people, the inability to function at work, all of those things that we're all subject to. You know, all humans have something. No matter how clean and shiny we may look on the outside, we're here for a reason, and that reason is spiritual growth. And so I would just encourage anybody who's suffering with any of this, or just is, you know, maybe not suffering, but just really willing to grow, to apply these principles of sharing what's really going on inside of you, uh, to look at the details of how you work in your life and in your mind. Work with another person if you have access to them to share that and get insight. And then work quickly to develop that spiritual connection. I think it's really why we're here and it's absolutely worthwhile. It's changed my life for sure. I can't even believe I was that person, but I really was. I have transitioned so much and it's not, I have done some work. There's no doubt about it. But it has really been the grace of a loving God that has continued to sustain me and encourage me. And I have also been fortunate enough to surround myself with friends who think and act and feel the same way I do. Their purpose is the same. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything I can do to help you, please reach out. And I look forward to talking to you again. Take care.